The environmental review, consultation, and other actions required by applicable federal environmental laws for this project are being or have been carried out by FDOT pursuant to 23 U.S.C. 327 and a memorandum of understanding dated May 26, 2022 and executed by the Federal Highway Administration and FDOT. This hearing is being conducted in hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This hearing is being conducted virtually through GoToWebinar and over the phone on Tuesday, October 10, 2023, and in person on Wednesday, October 11, 2023. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 448-456-1. The purpose of tonight's public hearing is to share information with the general public about the proposed improvement, its conceptual design, all alternatives under study, and the potential impacts and benefits regarding social, economic, and environmental factors associated with this project. The public hearing also serves as an official forum providing an opportunity for members of the public to express their opinions regarding the project. There are three components to tonight's public hearing. First, the open house, which occurred prior to this presentation, where you were invited to view the project displays and speak directly with the project team and provide comments in writing or to the court reporter. Second, this presentation, which will explain the project purpose and need, study alternatives, potential impacts and enhancement to the environment, and proposed methods to mitigate project impacts. And third, a formal comment period following this presentation where you'll have the opportunity to provide oral statements or provide your comments either in writing or directly to the court reporter. This public hearing was advertised consistent with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, DeLand, Florida, 32720-6834 by phone at 386-943-5077 or email at melissa.mckinney at dot.state.fl.us. That's M-E-L-I-S-S-A period M-C-K-I-N-N-E-Y at D-O-T period S-T-A-T-E period F-L period U-S. You may also contact Stefan Kulikowski, State Title VI Coordinator, Florida Department of Transportation Equal Opportunity Office, by mail at 605 Suwannee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, or by phone at 850-414-4742, or email at Stefan Kulikowski at dot.state.fl.us. That's S T E F A N period K U L A K O W S K I at D O T period S T A T E period F L period U S. The information is shown on a sign at the in person location, on the project website, and in the public hearing notifications. This public hearing was advertised in a manner consistent with the federal and state requirements shown on this slide. This public hearing was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on FDOT's Public Notices website, the Project website, and in the Daytona Beach News Journal. In addition, adjacent property owners, elected and appointed officials, government agencies, and interested individuals were also notified about this public hearing. Project documents are available for viewing at the Hope Place Public Library, 1310 Wright Street, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32117, Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. 
The project documents are also available on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 448456-1. The LPGA Boulevard PD&E project begins at the intersection of LPGA Boulevard and US 92 and terminates at the intersection of LPGA Boulevard and Williamson Boulevard, approximately 6.2 miles. The project also involves the Tomoka River Bridge and the I-95 interchange, which is the northern gateway to the city of Daytona Beach. This corridor contributes to the local and regional economy. It provides access to beaches, golf courses, businesses, and various attractions, and also serves freight traffic. Both I-95 and LPGA Boulevard serve as evacuation routes. We are now in the PD&E study phase. FDOT was able to advance the design for this project, which is currently underway. The PD&E study is the FDOT's process for complying with the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, requirements, and is used to determine and evaluate a range of potential solutions known as alternatives. The PD&E study evaluates the potential impacts and enhancements associated with these alternatives. Looking ahead, the right-of-way phase is partially funded, and the construction phase is not yet funded. FDOT is evaluating several funding options for right-of-way and construction. Planning consistency means the project information is consistent with the FDOT and the River to Sea Transportation Planning Organization planning documents and programs. This project is identified with Map ID F in Chapter 6 of the River to Sea TPO's Connect 2045 Long Range Transportation Plan or LRTP. The project is listed as one of the plan's cost feasible projects, which means the TPO has identified it as financially viable based on projected revenue anticipated to be available through 2045. The project is also identified in the River to Sea TPO's five-year transportation improvement program or TIP. The purpose of this project is to accommodate existing and future travel demand, including bicyclist and pedestrian needs, and to enhance safety along LPGA Boulevard and at the I-95 interchange. The project area has experienced unprecedented growth in recent years. What used to be a rural area back in the 1980s is now home to numerous major residential communities and commercial developments. This has caused congestion to grow significantly over time, and it's projected to get worse in the future if no improvements are made. The I-95 interchange will continue to be a heavily traveled section of the project. Just east of the interchange, traffic volume is projected to reach 78,000 vehicles per day in 2050. West of the interchange, the volume will reach 56,000 vehicles per day, which is significantly more than the existing roadway and interchange can handle. This corridor has severe safety issues. There have been 927 crashes recorded in the project area between 2015 and 2019, an average of 186 per year. Rear-end crashes were the most common. This type of crash is directly linked to congestion. 11 fatal crashes and 208 injury crashes were reported during the same period. Additionally, six pedestrian or bicycle crashes occurred during the same period. It should be noted that the LPGA Boulevard has a lack of pedestrian and bicycle features. Since future traffic volumes are projected to increase substantially, crashes are also anticipated to increase if no improvements are made to this corridor. In this study, we evaluated a no-build alternative and one build alternative. The build alternative includes various improvements. The no-build alternative will maintain the existing roadway and the I-95 interchange configuration, as well as the Tomoka River Bridge. Although it does not address the project's purpose and need, the no-build alternative is carried through the project evaluation as a baseline for comparison purposes. Proposed improvements in the build alternative include widening LPGA Boulevard throughout the project limits, adding bicycle and pedestrian features, replacing and widening the Tomoka River Bridge, and modifying the I-95 interchange. This concept is safer and more efficient in handling future traffic demand. Now let's briefly review the details of build alternative. 
The first section between US 92 and Timber Creek Road, shown in orange, will be widened from two lanes to four lanes, and 14-foot shared-use paths will be added on both sides of the road to accommodate bicyclists and pedestrians. The second section between Timber Creek Road and Williamson Boulevard, shown in blue, will be widened to six lanes, and 12-foot shared-use paths will be added on both sides of the road. Turn lanes are also recommended to accommodate heavy turning movement volumes at intersections. These improvements are proposed within the existing right-of-way, except at Welshinger Butler Circle South and Williamson Boulevard, where minor right-of-way in the form of corner clipping will be needed to accommodate the right turn lanes. Additional right-of-way is needed to accommodate stormwater ponds. The existing Tomoka River Bridge will be replaced with a new 340-foot bridge. The proposed bridge will accommodate three lanes in each direction, left turn lanes, a median, and a 12-foot shared use path in each direction. All improvements will be within the existing right-of-way. The new bridge is designed to provide the required clearance, which also accounts for the effects of sea level rise. To enhance wildlife connectivity, two wildlife paths are proposed beneath the bridge. The PD&E study evaluated multiple intersection concepts aimed at enhancing safety and alleviating traffic congestion. Based on the evaluation results, it is recommended that traditional signal control be implemented at the following intersections. US 92, locally known as International Speedway Boulevard, Tournament Drive, Timber Creek Road, and Champions Drive. Traditional signal control is also proposed at Tomoka Farms Road, Outlet Boulevard and Technology Boulevard, and Williamson Boulevard intersections. During the public open house held in February of this year, we presented innovative concepts aimed at redirecting certain movements at the Tomoka Farms Road intersection and Technology Boulevard, Outlet Boulevard intersection. Following a more in-depth evaluation and mindful consideration of community input, FDOT opted to maintain these intersections as traditional signal control, serving all movements. Essentially, the improvements to the LPGA Boulevard will seamlessly integrate with the existing side streets. Based on the intersection evaluation, modern roundabouts were warranted over traditional signals at the following intersections. Welshinger Butler Circle South, which will be a future location of Dunn Avenue Extension, Welshinger Butler Circle North, and International Golf Drive, International Tennis Drive. Unlike traffic circles, modern roundabouts are designed with focus on safety and traffic flow efficiency. The modern roundabouts function through yielding, eliminating full stop conditions and delays associated with traffic lights. The design of modern roundabouts contribute to reduced speed and smoother traffic flow, which enhances safety. Modern roundabouts have many mobility and safety benefits when compared to traditional signalized intersections. First, roundabouts allow continuous traffic flow by allowing the drivers to move through the intersection without stopping. This can increase intersection capacity up to 50%. When it comes to safety, modern roundabouts can result in less severe crashes when compared to signalized and unsignalized intersections because they eliminate head-on and high-speed right-angle collisions. Roundabouts have 90% fewer fatalities and 76% fewer injuries due to the removal of right-angle, head-on, and T-bone conflict movements. Additionally, modern roundabouts can reduce up to 40% of pedestrian and bicycle crashes. At the I-95 interchange, FDOT initially investigated five innovative interchange options summarized on this slide with respect to several metrics, including right-of-way needs, congestion reduction, cost, ability to expand in the future, constructability, and safety. Out of these five options, the signalized turbine interchange performed better toward meeting the project goals of reducing congestion and improving safety while being mindful of cost and right-of-way needs. The signalized turbine interchange is designed to address operational challenges created by heavy traffic flows going to and from I-95, Outlet Boulevard, Technology Boulevard, and Tomoka Farms Road and to reduce the number of crashes at the I-95 interchange. Unlike other options initially evaluated, this interchange concept will respond well to the traffic growth created by new development along LPGA Boulevard. 
This is a close-up view of the signalized turbine interchange with a camera located above Holiday Inn, looking northeast. Here is another close-up view of the northbound off-ramp looking north, and to the right is Rooms to Go and Sam's Club. Here is another view showing the southbound on-ramp. To the left is Holiday Inn and Halifax Humane Society building. The signalized turbine interchange concept offers substantial benefits in terms of addressing the project's purpose and need. The concept efficiently addresses congestion and safety issues at the interchange by spreading the traffic across LPGA Boulevard to improve traffic flow by splitting the corridor into separate one-way pairs, providing longer storage for left-turn vehicles without interfering with oncoming traffic, and reducing the number of conflict points where the ramps intersect LPGA Boulevard. Additionally, the signalized turbine interchange is easier to expand in the future, beyond the 20-year design period or 2050. The bridges and approach roadways, including the shared use paths, have been set to their ultimate location to allow future expansion without reconfiguring the interchange again. Driving through the signalized turbine interchange is easy and no different from other common interchange types, such as State Road 40 or West Granada Boulevard interchange. This interchange provides all movements to I-95 and from I-95, as shown here. Safe and convenient pedestrian and bicycle paths and crossings are important components of this interchange as well. This concept has 12-foot shared use paths on both sides to accommodate pedestrians and bicyclists. This PD&E study has evaluated potential impacts to the social and economic, cultural, natural, and physical environments associated with each alternative. The project has been evaluated with respect to the Presidential Executive Order 11990, entitled Protection of Wetlands, and Executive Order 11988, entitled Floodplain Management and Protection. Avoidance and minimization of impacts to these features were considered in the selection of the preferred alternative. A drainage analysis was performed to identify and evaluate stormwater pond locations that will provide water quality treatment and flood control along the corridor. The pond locations shown on the concept plans will continue to be evaluated as the project progresses through the design phase and coordination with property owners. The project also analyzed potential floodplain impacts and identified compensation areas. An evaluation matrix shown here compares the benefits, impacts, and costs associated with each alternative. The build alternative meets the purpose and need by accommodating future traffic demand, improving safety, and improving bicycle and pedestrian facilities. The no-build alternative would not meet the project's purpose and need. Overall, 14 vacant parcels will be needed to accommodate stormwater ponds. The build alternative will not cause any business or residential relocation. The likelihood of the project's impact to these historic and cultural resources is low. The proposed roadway widening and pond sites would result in direct permanent impacts to 75.85 acres of wetlands. Most of these wetlands are located within the existing roadway right-of-way. 26 listed species and one candidate species have the potential to occur within the project area. However, the likelihood of the project's potential impact to these species is low. The project is estimated to impact a total of 5.7 acre feet of floodplains. These impacts will be mitigated in the floodplain compensation areas. Four contamination sites adjacent to the project have a low to medium likelihood of being affected by the build alternative. There are 135 noise-sensitive sites adjacent to the project, including single-family homes, schools, four tennis courts, and two outdoor boarding and grooming facilities. Analysis of the predicted noise levels associated with the build alternative indicates that the implementation of the build alternative would not cause substantial noise level increases. Therefore, noise walls are not recommended. Implementation of the build alternative will likely result in relocations to some of the existing utilities. 
The estimated total project cost is $261 million and is split as follows. The estimated cost for right-of-way is $24 million. Wetland mitigation is $4 million. Construction is $218 million. And construction engineering inspection is $15 million. The build alternative was selected as the preferred alternative for the following reasons. It enhances safety by improving intersections throughout the corridor and adding a raised grass median which separates opposing lanes of traffic and thereby reduces the chances of motor vehicle crashes. Also, the build alternative adds shared use paths that enhance the safety and travel of pedestrians and bicyclists. The proposed improvements in the build alternative increase capacity to LPGA Boulevard and the I-95 interchange, thereby accommodating future traffic growth in the project area. Additionally, public input was considered in the selection of the preferred alternative. Most of the roadway improvements are within existing right-of-way, except at Welshinger-Butler Circle intersection and Williamson Boulevard intersection, where minor right-of-way is needed to accommodate right-turn lanes. Additional right-of-way will be needed for stormwater management ponds and floodplain compensation sites, which have been placed on vacant parcels. This project will not cause any relocation of families or businesses. All right-of-way acquisitions will be conducted in accordance with Florida Statute 339.09 and the Federal Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Policies Act of 1970, commonly known as the Uniform Act. The right-of-way specialists are here tonight and available to talk with you about the process. The preferred alternative adds a median along LPGA Boulevard from US 92 to Tomoka Farms Road. It maintains the locations of all existing intersections and provides median openings at several locations according to the access management standards. Additionally, the preferred alternative will remove the median opening at Concierge Boulevard and make this intersection a right-in, right-out only to minimize traffic conflicts with the westbound left-turning vehicles at Williamson Boulevard and hence improve safety on this section of LPGA Boulevard. This project is being developed in accordance with Section 335.199 of the Florida Statutes requiring FDOT to notify all affected property owners, municipalities, and counties of a proposed project that will close or modify an existing access to an abutting property owner at least 180 days before the design is finalized. The PD&E study began in October 2021, and it is expected to be completed by early spring 2024. Public engagement activities and opportunities for the public throughout the PD&E study have included individual stakeholder coordination meetings, the public information meeting, and this public hearing. Design is also being conducted concurrent with this PD&E study. The next step after today's public hearing is to incorporate your input into our decision-making process. After the comment period closes and your input has been considered, a decision will be made and the final PD&E document will be sent to the FDOT Office of Environmental Management for approval. We encourage your input and feedback about this project and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public hearing record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted anytime, those submitted by October 21st, 10 days after the public hearing, will become part of the project's public hearing record. In-person attendees are encouraged to speak with project team members to ask questions and provide input. To submit a comment for the public hearing record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. You may also provide your comment directly to the court reporter. You may also contact the project manager, Jesse Bluin, directly by email at jesse.bluin at dot.state.fl.us. That's J E S S E period B L O U I N at dot period S T A T E period F L period U S. Or by mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, DeLand, Florida 32720. 
You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5167 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public hearing notification that you may have received by mail. As a reminder, this presentation, along with all the materials presented tonight, are posted on the project website, which can be accessed by visiting www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 448456-1. Or from the CFL Roads website main page, type the project number 448456-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. 